Is it possible to beat The Last of Us on grounded difficulty without guns? Some of you more knowledgeable players are already saying no. In Bill's Town you're hung upside down and have to use the revolver. And there is also the sniper section where you are forced to pick off enemies. Yes indeed, but apart from those two isolated incidents, whenever you have full control, can every encounter be beaten without using a gun? And let's kick this up a notch. No bow either. I am going to attempt to sneak, bludgeon, and ignite my way through this wonderful game. I expect bouts of pure elation and deep frustration. So come along and let's see if it is possible. You seem to know your way around a gun. You reckon you can handle that? First encounter and using two vital parts of my strategy. Stealth takedowns and by holding the sprint button, rushing in with iron fists. Although I'm making a feck of this. So that was just two enemies and Joel is already keeled over in agony. Not a good start. The next few encounters went well. All my playthroughs means that I know every enemy pattern. I do want to point out something important. Picking up this 2x4. You'll see why in just a bit. Ellie is now along for the journey and all three of us head downtown for what will be a really tricky situation. One stationary runner, three roaming around and a clicker resting against a wall. First attempt and I learn something new. Stun and swing for the fences will kill a clicker. Same goes for any other regular enemy. 2x4 coming in handy. I'm trying to get the clicker out of the way first and then deal with everybody else but it is not working. Time to go back to stealth. But Jesus are they sensitive to sound. Slow and steady will be my way to go. Creep ever so cautiously up behind them and if they lurch one way or another, stop. Wait for them to continue before pursuing. Ah, wrong angle. This is going on forever. Taking out the first two enemies is long enough, then waiting on the third guy to be in the right position and there is no guarantee I can make it over to him without causing a commotion. New strategy. Stealth the first two, who are reliable, take note of where the bottle is, throw brick, click her down, pick up bottle, smash runner, and now one on one with the last runner. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> the bastard gave me a fright and ran behind me. This is an encounter I was dreading. I right, come on down. Think I found a decent strategy for future playthroughs. Hallway full of clickers. Sneaky sneaky. Still a bit tense due to the sounds emitting from these cursed souls. Bill's town next and look what I found. You can join the rest of the useless weapons in my backpack. <laughs> Cheers, Bill. Finally getting to fire a gun. Aim is still pretty good. Outside the school, the best way to deal with a horde of runners is by sprinting around. Using my allies as bait, isolate one of them and... Inside the school, things are much more difficult. Far less space to work with. I did learn something new again. Smashing a stunned clicker's head in with a brick. What makes this section difficult is that there is no checkpoint until the gym with the bloater. I try to focus on eliminating runners and dart around, letting Bill the tank hatch the clickers. Two out of three groups of enemies killed, and my dumbass misses. Next time, I go on the attack. All right the bloater. I have used zero Molotov cocktails and scoured the game world for this encounter. Two nail bombs and three Molotov cocktails. Terrible feckin'. Experimenting with a way to inflict damage without Joel's right hand of God, I found out I can do this. Never knew Joel had a kicking animation for enemies lower than him. Well, here goes the last Molotov. Just a 
couple of runners. Well, at least this time I can be less wasteful with a better aim. Instead, use the final Molotov for these two hoodlums. Let's hope that wasn't a waste. Time to get the car going. Lots of push a bit, run around, push a bit, run around. Always leaving the clickers for Bill. Using a brick if he's under duress. We're good. Back to the truck. Pittsburgh and the encounters aren't getting any easier. Most of them have guns. I don't. The ultimate cat and mouse game. Oh, shit. <laughs> Over here! All right. I think that's the last of them. You okay? Yeah, I guess so. Good. So we need to get the hell out of here. Yeah, good idea. To the hotel basement. This is becoming an exhausting stretch of the game with the last few encounters and now this. If you try this challenge yourself, I recommend taking a break after big encounters. The more I did in a row, the more mentally drained I found myself and silly mistakes started to creep in. Get the keycard, four stalkers and plenty of stuff to throw at them. Activate the generator and run for the exit. Ah oh, crap. Must just be unlucky. Okay, maybe crawl to the exit and make sure the coast is clear. All good. The keypad first, dummy. God damn it. Every bloody time I run past it. Yikes, that was close. Here we go. One of the two hardest parts of the game as Joel. There is a way to get through this area not alerting anyone. If you follow a specific path and kill the final guy of the first wave in a specific spot to manipulate the spawn point of the second wave. Link in the description to that video. But yeah, I can never remember all the steps, so into the fire I go. That sniper is causing me trouble. Second attempt, I take out this guy, then the sniper and try to get to this guy, but I'm too late, so I retreat. Try again, but the grace of an ox. This is where things get fascinating. Enemies are in direct sight of Ellie. They might rush in to expect the body, but Ellie pot shots them. Also, this table acts as a two-way go. Whichever side enemies come in, I can sneak around the other side. However, Ellie is relentless. So much that I almost feel bad for the helpless hunters. Almost. Finally, the gunfire has stopped. Still no cutscenes, there must be a couple of stragglers. What the hell? I suppose hide long enough and they just wait for me? I was hoping to do this stealthily. Really stupid throwing the brick. Maltov cocktail throwers don't have a firearm. Notice how Joel is clutching his side. I was mighty close to death. All right, come on down. Great work, Ellie. You did all the heavy lifting. I think I'm in the clear until Ellie's sections. As in, I don't think any encounter will be impossible. Difficult, dangerous, but not impossible. Let's do a rundown. Escaping Pittsburgh. Get spotted. Retreat. Good old Henry gets in a clusterfuck. Molotov away. Charge. Only one left. Not the strategy I was going to go with, but it worked. Sewers. Run. Done. Final room in the sewers. Wish I had a smoke bomb to stall them while Ellie and Sam open the door. One Molotov and the nail bomb from Bill on me. Another Molotov in the room. That'll do. Whoa! <laughs> Gruesome ending. Suburbs, much like the sewers, run! So, 
pretty safe around the back, clobber the last guy in the house and barrel up the stairs to the sniper's nest. Ah, the second of two forced gunplay segments. Still got a wicked aim. Tommy's dam. You are starting to see the pattern. Still fascinates me how I can run by sections that were so difficult my first time around. Even this guy breezing right past me. However, I do have a problem. No Molotovs left. If I did, I could do this. Instead, I can take out a couple of guys close range, but the group at the door. Not a hope of getting near enough to do damage. So it is all up to my allies, Tommy and these two fellas. Surely they can get the job done. This is their home. They should be desperate to defend it. Nah, feckin' pea shooters they have. What I found out is that only Tommy can do real damage, as he's the one that follows me around. Probably so he can bail me out of a situation occasionally. This guy's having a love affair with something behind the sheet metal. Whatever floats your boat, buddy. Eventually. On the way to the ranch house, stay down and let Tommy do as much damage as possible. Make sure not to get outflanked. <laughs> A real slobber knocker on my hands here. That's something I haven't seen before. Fucking King Leonidas himself. The seconds of the hardest parts playing as Joel, the university. I know some of you will be saying, but this isn't that hard. I'd agree with you on normal. Survivor, even grounded, but no access to guns, this becomes really tricky. No checkpoint between the upper floor and lower. One wrong move and I have to do it all again. Trying to go stealth is impossible because of these two gobshites. They are so close together and constantly turning around, it is impossible to take out one without the other seeing. If I hide in this room, they move from the hallway and flank me. Great opportunity to get by, right? For some reason, they always spot me. It's just a mess until I had an epiphany. I don't need nail bombs or Molotov cocktails at any other point for the rest of the game. Whatever I got, I can use. So the two guys in this room, get down Ellie, Jesus. Anyway, the two guys in this room, now that I'm feeling dangerous, let's try something different here. That was close, but it worked. I know more enemies are coming, so I retreat. Never travel in pairs when I'm in this kind of mood. Upstairs, done. Now to trigger downstairs and retreat. Damn it, get out of the way! Exhausting. Also, I forgot Joel fires a gun here. What the hell, Joel? Are you deliberately trying to ruin my no guns playthrough? And Ellie forcing me to use a bow to kill this deer. People, people, have we forgotten about the challenge? Even this upstanding citizen is gifting Ellie a hunting rifle. No thank you, I'll stick to my nifty switchblade. Okay, as difficult as Joel's sections are, Nothing compared to these two upcoming encounters with Ellie. Joel can run in with iron fists and clobber enemies. Ellie does not have that luxury. However, what she does have is the ability to kill enemies in one strike with the switchblade if an ally is in trouble. So the strategy will be to use David as bait. Sorry David, I've only known you for a few minutes but you seem like a good man. Once he's in trouble, dart in for the kill. Bricks and bottles can also stun enemies, leaving them vulnerable too. Those are my only two ways of killing enemies in this ridiculously confined space. I don't know if this is possible. Each wave of enemies brings their own problem, but it is the final wave when two runners and a clicker come through the window at the same time that creates near unbeatable odds. Like, what the hell am I supposed to do here? 
Now to start all over again. I know I have to be aggressive and limit the amount of bodies running around in this cramped space. I was a bit too eager there and got caught. One wrong move and back to the beginning I go. Bit of a desperation move here, even took damage but got away with it. Having three enemies running around is a death sentence. Have to thin the crowd. 45 minutes of retries and for some reason this time, they don't all come in the window at once. It's not over yet. Now for the single most intense enemy encounter. Mess up and I have to redo that entire room. And I don't think I have that in me. Come on, David. Oh, <laughs> what a relief. No matter what is left, I am confident I can beat it. Or so I thought. Hubris, ladies and gentlemen. Hubris. A goddamn hour this section took. I had to have my head on a swivel and be constantly aware of enemies running up behind me. Keeping track of where bottles and bricks are because if David isn't around, they are my only way of killing someone. As for the bloater, one Molotov, let the fecker cook for a bit, then hit the nail bomb. Okay, I am so ready to play as Joel again. Ah, but how do I get by all these guys? Things get strange. If they lose track of me, they seem to gradually move in the direction I want to go. Like, look at them all. What the hell is this? How on earth am I meant to get past? I have no resources and no health. I know if I can get around the far corner of the house, a cutscene will trigger. Feck it. Let's resort to the previous strategy. Run. Ah, <laughs> holy shit. I didn't think that would work. I thought for sure I would be shot while in the open. One guy even ran to his designated spot to initiate this grapple leading to the cutscene. Well, hey, pretty lucky. Similar tactic for the snow levels. Poor visibility for enemies means a perfect opportunity to run past them. Also, David turned out not to be a swell guy. Oh, what a shame. At least winter is finally over. I'm in the clear until I reach this one annoying clicker who I forgot about. Look at him, hiding in the corner. I can see you. Once Ellie's in the room, I need to help. Tried waking him up early. Nope. Tried punching. Nope. Tried throwing a brick like a baseball pitcher. Nope. Not even phased. I have to use a gun. This playthrough is going to hell. Final encounter, home stretch. The hospital. Run on the first level and pray I get enough supplies on the second level to create a smoke bomb. Sweet. Sorry Doc, Joel is taking Ellie and getting out of here. Epilogue and BAM! Playthrough finished! So, can I beat The Last of Us on Grounded without guns, including the bow? No. No, I can't. The game forced me to use a gun four times. Bill's town hanging upside down, sniping enemies, Joel while wounded, and this pesky clicker. Also, I have to use the bow for the deer. Other than that though, every single encounter done without a single shot fired on the hardest difficulty. I'm so proud of that. I didn't think it was possible, especially the Ellie sections. But this was a great way to push the game in a direction it was never intended and explore a new playstyle. If you're a fan of The Last of Us and looking for an excuse to revisit it, give this challenge a try. You might surprise yourself by how resourceful you can be. Thanks for watching.